Good day. Welcome everybody to the latest episode of the Green Left Show. My name is Alex Bainbridge, and today we're going to be discussing the Scarborough Gas Hub and the campaign against it. Before we get underway, I do want to acknowledge that we are recording this show on stolen Aboriginal land. Uh, this is country that was never ceded, sovereignty never ceded, and it always was, always will be Aboriginal land. We pay our respects to elders and warriors past and present. Today I'm joined by two guests, Josie Alec, who is a Gurama Matathermia woman, um, and she's part of Save Our Songlines, and also Petrina Harley, who's an activist with Green Left and Socialist Alliance, was a candidate in the recent elections, and is also active in the campaign against the Scarborough Gas Hub. So welcome to you both. I began by asking Josie to explain, the for people who aren't familiar with the cultural significance of um, Murujuga, which is also known as the Barrap Peninsula, uh, to please explain why local people are so incensed by this uh, proposal to develop the, the, uh, the Scarborough Gas Hub. Well, Morajuga holds, you know, millions of uh, pieces of rock art uh, on them and each piece of rock art has a story to it. And, um, you know, this is the stories that were passed down through generations and generations of, of family lines that belong, the bloodlines that belong there. Um, and basically they carry song lines that, that are, you know, that are carried through our people and their families. Um, so... You know, if you think about it, you've got, um, you know, the World Dictionary uh, or, you know, um, you know, and here we have this amazing museum of, of art that's on country um, and that is our Bible. That is basically our Bible. It's set in stone um, and that's, that's uh, got all our laws, our protocols, you know, our kinship systems, um, you know, our, our cultural law systems of, of who we are and, and how to practice sustainability for Mother Earth. So that's how important it is. Actually, yeah, when I was uh, studying Aboriginal education, my lecturer said that a lot of students get impressed with the sort of oh, ancient Egypt, you know, pyramids and so forth, but there's actually records here much, much older than the pyramids. Yeah, absolutely. They are. They're, they're much older than the pyramids. You know, um, the Taj Mahal, the, you know, you name it. That's in in um, you know the even the um, the statues on Sunday Island, these these are really significant. The you know even um, the amount of time that they've been here, they they held a creation story, and if you think about a creation story, or there's seven sisters dreaming story, there's rainbow serpent dreaming stories, there's all these dreaming stories that have been passed down through generations, and if you think of creation of Mother Earth, you're thinking. How many billions of years ago was that? And, um, you know, even though no one said it or they put it down or they figured it out what, what these mean, these pieces of rock art mean, or, or you know, the, our elders who have gone to their graves with, with stories, um, there still are, you know, there are people who know these stories. There are people um, in that direct lineage that have, that have the information um, and a, a lot of people that, you know, are waking up now, a lot of, a lot of um, you know, fellas my age that uh, sort of were, were chosen to come back and do, you know, to help help Mother Earth because we all know what the mining companies are trying to do. Um, and if you don't know, well, th you know, this is a really great chance to, to actually think about um, where all these industries are putting themselves. Why are they putting themselves there? And can you perhaps explain, like, just... Uh, I guess in more detail, like, I mean, the, Scar the Scarborough shelf is offshore, but how is this development at, you know, threatening this uh, rock art and song lines? Yeah, it is. It's um, So we've got Perdamon as well, which is another a fertiliser uh, plant. We've already got Yarra there. It's already destroyed country and it's, and it's leaking, you know, contaminating the water and it's leaking uh, tonnes of emissions onto the rock art, which is right across, you know, not even like 500 500 meters away from it um and then you've got another fertilizer program coming in a project coming in um putting itself right there right next to that one um and they're all feeding off scarborough gas um you know these are billions and billions of dollars worth of projects and we even know it because you know we look at our health system it's failing and the government still turn their back on the people and um go and give these companies you know millions of dollars like who would give a company four hundred and thirty-eight million dollars to go and to go and put a fertilizer company there? Again, removing rocks, 
removing sacred sites and plant themselves right there where there's another fertiliser plant um, when it's going to make more emissions, it's going to make more health problems. And, you know, we have a big health problem now in, in Australia. We have a big housing crisis and, you know, we have we have a big food crisis. So we really should be looking into, you know, keeping our energy clean and, and um, the government should be delivering on that first before they even think about putting new, you know, um, coal mining, gas mining, you know, fertiliser mining, whatever, that's destructing and destroying the country. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about the clean energy, can you talk about the climate risks of, of this Scarborough Gas Hub? Oh, absolutely. Look, we've already seen the climate risks happening all over Australia. We've, we've already seen the floods, we've seen fires. Look, I was standing in Robin when it was 51 degrees. And, you know, Robin's right there. It's only like 40 k's down the road from, from that hub. And, um, you know, and that doesn't only mean Robin was 51 degrees. It means like most of the Pilbara hit over 50 degrees that day. You cannot live in a place where, you know, um, it's that hot. You know, it's it's ridiculous. And and the government just seemed to think that it's okay. It's only 50 degrees. You've got air conditioners. Well, yeah, maybe all the mining people have got air conditioners because you give them houses with, you know, while they come and work there, you give them the works. But what about the local people? That's the, that's the people that we really need to, to start looking at, uh, the, the grassroots people and th how it affects them, you know, and it's it's not affecting only affecting Aboriginal people, it's affecting everybody. And, Petrina, do you, did you have anything you want to add about the climate risks about Scarborough? Um, yeah, because on that note, as Josie says, it, it affects everyone. So we know um, global warming is it's a, it's a global issue and um, this new Scarborough Gas Project, um, if it goes ahead, if it goes ahead, it's like they're looking at 1.7 billion tonnes of, of toxic emissions, and that's just the first two scopes as they describe it. That's, you know, the extracting the emissions they've created here. But then, of course, um, all of Scarborough Gas is um, for export. I think Perdiman's actually the only WA company invested in, in using buying the gas. Um, so, of course, then whatever country then buys the gas and then burns the gas there, you've got what they call scope three emissions. So this whole lie about, you know, net zero goals, um, there's no way like Woodside and Perdiman and the Australian government are, are ever going to get to net zero while they're continuing with these massive new gas projects. And we've had six IPCC reports all make that direct link between, you know, the burning and extracting of fossil fuels and global warming. Um, and so, yeah, it's not just the domestic climate disasters that we're already seeing, the bushfires, the floods. Um, we're talking, you know, global catastrophes. Um, and the fact that this gas seam is, is offshore, um, you know, the pipeline, they're proposing 400 kilometres of pipeline on the ocean floor right through marine sanctuaries. We're talking, you know, extinctions of, of species, endangered species. Um, it's, it's just, it's horrific. Um, and the government talks about, oh, well, you know, we can't just cut the gas off because then we won't have any power. It's like, no, use the, use the reserves we're already using now. There's actually no need for massive new projects, right? Use the gas reserves we have now. Use the existing facilities while we transition to renewable energy. But just proposing, you know, it, it's like ever since COP26 when the when the PM, you know, refused to, to sign this global agreement or reduce emissions, it's like not only are they not bothering to reduce emissions, but they're like forging ahead with, with all these massive new projects and the new government is spruiking gases like this transitional fuel that's cleaner than coal when it absolutely isn't. It's, um, it's just toxic. So, I mean, Labor's Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek has uh, rejected a small coal mine that um, Clive Palmer wanted to open kind of near the Great Barrier Reef is not the big coal mine that Palmer also wants to open in the middle of Queensland in the Galilee Basin. Uh, so some people are being confused about that. But I mean, that's on the one hand rejecting that. But also just last month, Plibersec has explicitly given support to this Perdiman, um, you know, the Perdiman fertiliser plant. So I'm wondering if, Tracy, if you can, uh, I guess, explain some more of the issues about Perdiman, what it is and what it isn't, and also uh, what your thoughts are about the, you know, the, uh, I guess, the role of the Labor government in all of this. Oh, okay. So, well, look, the, the Section 9 was completely to stop Perman from moving rocks. Um, three very significant rock, pieces of rock art um, 
which belong to a fishing dollar, which is, uh, you know, a very, very um, significant um, significant rocks in a chain of rocks that are very significant around that area that hold and create a story. So um, this is this is what the section nine was for. Tanya Plibersek came up and um, she actually did what we are. She did come up and she she did speak to us. She actually spoke to Mac and in her um, Mac being the Mordor Aboriginal Corporation. Um, and you know Mac um, sort of she spent basically all day there and then she went out on country with my daughter and my niece for about two hours and that was about it. So she couldn't even experience get to experience exactly what it is that we wanted to tell her or they wanted to tell her. Um, and also, um, you know, so when when she came up, she spoke to Matt. She only spoke to a couple of members of Matt, you know, and then she makes a decision about, yes, the community, you know, represent, Matt represents community, da 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 So in, in reality, if she had a came up there and Matt had to put on a community meeting and everyone had a voice their community, you know, in the community had a voice their opinions about Herdeman and actually had it known about Herdeman, um, you know, the, the the whole velocity of the project, um, you know, kit and caboodle, like the, the space it's taking up, the um, the actual places that it's going to desecrate and then, you know, create more emissions that are going to still desecrate, you know, even more and even quicker, the rock art. Um, our people just, they just have, you know, they're so angry it's not funny because nobody's actually told them. They haven't been transparent. The the government, the the Aboriginal Corporation hasn't been transparent. Um, the government have definitely not been transparent about anything that they're doing. And we knew, I knew for a fact that Tanya would come up, she would look, she would, she would go and she would do a okay, I've been there, and yes, I've done that, and then go back home and then just say no to our section nine. She has um said yes to section 10 so we know that's what she puts in a this investigator and but we're working on that at the moment but the thing is is that the WA, the WA government is a captured state we live in a captured state we're actually living in captured Australia the whole lot of us because the mining companies and you know the the governments are hand in hand with each other and then you get things like these land councils or what they call land councils more Jugger is an Aboriginal corporation and it's only a voice for the for five language groups you know, um, in reality, it's not a PBC. It's not a. It's not actually an Aboriginal corporation per se, um, like a native title corporation, because it doesn't have native title. Um, you are playing with an area that is Australian heritage listed. Um, then it's got the World Heritage listing on top of that. Who in their right mind would put another mine in there? And and the government actually putting all this money into that mine, where the money could be going somewhere else then, you know, they're putting all this money into this mine. And so it's got to make you think, why are they doing this? Why are they putting another another project like a fertiliser project that's actually, you know, creating so much emissions in, um, you know, our emissions are going to go way up. In 2050, we won't be here to record what, what the emissions are. And, you know, they count on this. They, they planned this for a very long time. They've been hand in hand with the government and they've been wheeling and dealing with the Aboriginal corporations, with the CEOs of the corporations who are, you know, they're in their back pockets and money talks. And, you know, if you're an environmentalist or you're anything like that, then you're a criminal. You know, if you have a voice for uh, plants and animals and the world, well, you're just a hippie criminal. Um, so we've got to change that language. We've got to start creating a narrative that is, uh, you know, that is, is, is absolutely different to what they have created and put into people's minds because everybody knows that when they step up and they, they get up every morning and they will put their feet on Mother Earth, you know, one day they're going to be putting their feet on, on the water of Mother Earth and she's just going to flood us all. Or it's going to become ice or it's going to become too hot. Now, we all know that the Earth is burning. Now, the, the temperatures are rising and they're rising and they're rising. That's what's happening, you know, and um, it, it's happened in evolution. It's in the rocks. It's right there, but we we are here, you know, with the knowledge of the, the the next stages of evolution of Mother Earth. We're here, and we we're standing up for her, for the country. We're standing up for humanity, you know, for our future generations. This is what it's all about. It's not about 
you know, giving jobs to, to these people now. It's not about, you know, having this much money and having this and having that, you know, having it all and working your ass off 12, you know, 7 to, to 7 every day, you know, 12 hours a day for a mining company. No, it's not life. Like that's that's not life. You know, you're not living life if you can't go into, you know, go into the nature once in a while and plant your flea or Mother Earth and actually connect to her. You're actually just being their robot, right? So that's... That's that's the narrative we want to change is is to not bring our kids up in a world like that. So, do you have much hope the Labor government, state and or federal, can be pressured on this? Um, they can be if we can we can just keep on keep on hammering them, keep on, um, you know, we've just got to keep on them all the time, all the time. And we, you know, it, it takes so much work. And you know, like Katrina would know, it's it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of you know. Just we've got to be sustainable ourselves to be able to do this work, and um, but that's that's just what we do because we're obligated as human beings. Then and me as an indigenous person and the holder of some of that knowledge of the rock art, of course I've got to stick up for it. I'm here to stand up for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the knowledge. Petrina, do you have any comments either about Perdiman and or pressuring the Labor governments? Um, yeah, well, uh, as an activist, I don't hold out too much hope for Labor. I mean, uh, Albo all through opposition was was spruiking gas as the as the transitional fuel. Um, and Labor are, you know, very good at doing, as you said, the, the the small token stuff that looks good. But when it comes down to it, as Josie was saying, you know, Woodside uh, are massive donors to both the Liberal and the Labor Party. Um, they know the score that whoever gets in as long as it's business as usual for them, you know, they're happy to to give money to to either side. Um, and this idea that, you know, we need it for, for jobs and growth is just ludicrous. Um, the fact that, you know, while the rest of the world is trying to divest, Australia is still hanging on to, you know, fossil fuels as, as you know, the major contributor to our economic system. Um, when you think the uh, the tourism industry alone employs far more people than does the mining industry, um, these new plants they're building are going to be um, automated, a lot of them, um, so the, the jobs they're offering are not that many. Um, they're going to be short short term. As I said, while everyone's divesting and, you know, no one's going to be buying our filthy fossil fuels for very much longer. Um, so these governments are not doing right by their workers. They're not looking at their long-term futures. They should be retraining people and investing in, you know, renewable plants and energy and taking their workers along with them there. Um, but, yeah, the, the Labor government, as I say, for a long, long time, just like the Libs, have, have just been in the pocket of the fossil fuel industry. Um, I mean, Josie was talking about, you know, jobs for the, boy, for the boys, one of the most heart-wrenching things, I think, for the Aboriginal community. Well, for, for all of us, you see like um, uh, Ben Wyatt, he now sits on the board of both Woodside um, and Rio Tinto after, you know, serving a, a good time in his term, allowing, you know, giving them the leases they wanted and, and doing what they wanted. He now gets kickbacks. It's all like jobs for the boys. They do right by the industry. Then once you serve your term, then, you, you know, you get a nice cushy job with one of these companies. Um, so... I don't hold out much help for the government, but the reason um, I still believe in activism is that um, it does work. So you wait around for government to do the right thing, we're talking years and years and years. We do not have years um, to go through the courts, change of government, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we need to build that that mass consciousness. We need to get more and more people on board and it, and it does work. Like James Price Point, um, which is a pristine area um, up near um, Broome, not that far from Caratha, Woodside had um, their site set on that a couple of years ago and it was a, a whole year's worth of campaign, people locking on and protesting and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and eventually um, they won that campaign. And now James Price Point is, as I said, it's a, it's a pristine um, there's ecotourism there, there, you know, families can still go and camp and, and you know, as they've traditionally done. Um, so, yeah, I don't hold out much hope for government, but I do hold out hope that, um, you know, pressure by the people 
so much pressure they they will be forced to to do the right thing eventually but yeah <laughs> time is not on our side that's the problem talking about activism you were arrested for protesting against the scarborough gas hub end of last year can you talk about that and like the what's happening with your case and uh you know what the next steps are yeah so um i've kind of been campaigning against woodside for over two years like down here in perth you know doing education stalls and attending lectures and um things like that and submissions and petitions and um anyway that the arrest happened last November, so this was a week where um, Scarborough were making their final decision um, to go ahead with the project, and it was it was all down to you know were they going to get the right investment and Perdaman eventually um, were their major investors um, gave them their support, and so we went up to Carath around about the time they were they hadn't announced the decision yet, um, and as I said, it was. So I just I just felt compelled to do it, you know, in terms of career wise and possible arrest wise, it you know, it wasn't the wisest thing to do necessarily. But as I said, the time was right, the momentum is there, just like it, it still is. Like there are um campaigns like Greenpeace have got on board, um, Josie Save the Songlines campaign is going gunbusters, um, we've got Scarborough Gas Action Alliance. There there are just as I said, the momentum is still there, so I really felt it was important to um, not let this court case just kind of die away, like plead guilty and pay fines and then that was it. I still feel it's a, a genuine argument that deserves to be heard in court, which is that w the harm that Woodside and the, this project will cause if it goes ahead is, is far greater than any harm we might have caused in, in blocking it you know, and disrupting business. So um, it's been a bit of delay because when I got arrested, I was also running as a candidate for the election. So um, it was important that I wouldn't have been able to run if I had a conviction. So we managed to kind of delay the court case till after the election. Um, so, yeah, we've got a date set now for the 1st of December. Um, we're kind of stalled at the moment because... Um, We've got we've got a lawyer helping us here in, in Perth to kind of build our case, but uh, no one wants to go up to Caratha, which is where the obviously the, the court case is going to happen. Um, uh, lawyers are already scared off, I think, by the the scope, you know, taking on a company like Woodside. Um, there's not a lot of chance of success. But I still feel it's it's really important, as I said, to have that argument heard as, as many times in as many places as possible. Um, so I think it's still really worth doing it. So at the moment we're representing ourselves, um, but we've yeah we've got a lawyer here helping us kind of build the case and our arguments and stuff, and, and plenty of people um, like Josie herself willing to testify as to the harm that that this um, project is going to cause. And so. Josie, for people who are listening to this, um, do you have any suggestions about what they can do to help uh, the First Nations people in the area and, and the campaign against Scarborough in general? Oh, look, we, um, of course, we have um, people power. Like Katrina said, people power is the utmost and foremost, um, you know, thing that we can use against the government is people power, people standing up on country with us and and, you know, Proving a point to everyone, this is not, this isn't, it's not good enough what they're doing. Um, they're not doing anything in their right mind for the people. They're actually, you know, they are greedy. They are taking, you know, lives every single day from us while they're giving all of this money and everything to, and everything they can so they can build these, you know, these monstrosities that are going to kill us in the long run anyway. Um, so people need to wake up and realize, you know, that. This is what we, this is it, you know, cut, get on song, save our song lines, get onto some of these, um, these projects and, and have a look and really look into, look into it, get on Google, have a look at what is actually happening here, get some facts and, um, you know, um, and, you know, if you want, go donate, donate to save our song lines so we can keep going. We, we just, you know, most of these people that are doing this are, are volunteers. Volunteers, we're earth warriors and we have an obligation to Mother Earth to do what we need to do. And um, we don't get paid for doing this stuff. 
And that's what people think, oh, it's, you know, big, big payments, you know, they go, they get this, they get that. We get nothing. The government and the and the mining industries and the corporation have everything. They have all the money, they, they have all the resources. But you know what? We've got the ancestors and we have our culture and we have people who believe in that, you know, and I, I uh, coming around and and realizing that Aboriginal people have kept this earth sustainable for for millennia, for millennia, and we're going to do it again. We're going to keep doing it and doing it. And I bet you any money, we were all here before one stage or another in her evolution, doing the same thing, even if it was just our grandfathers, grandmothers, or great 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 whatever it is, in a different way. But it's to to carry on the legacy that our ancestral lines have left us to, and our obligation to look after Mother Earth. I mean, our animals are dying by the, you know, by the handfuls, like every single day where, you know, they're becoming extinct. We, we you know, we have this and and we wonder why because they can't live um, on the earth anymore. You know, you've seen the floods in Pakistan. You've seen, you know, the people um, moving off country in India because they can't even live on their islands anymore because the water is just receding so badly. Like it's, it's coming up so badly that, um, you know, that it's it's displacing people. Um, and people have got to wake up and realise that this may happen to us one day. I mean, it very well will happen to us one day. We don't stop these sort of projects right now. Like we can't wait to 2030, we can't wait to 2050. We have to do this now. And this is the reason why we're at crucial, a very crucial point in, um, you know, a turning point. It's either, it's either basically do or die. And people, you know, they, they've heard stories, they've heard this and they've heard that, and it's like this would never happen in our lifetime. Guess what? It's going to happen in our lifetime. And we've got to really think of and foresee the future for our kids. We will put a link to Save Our Songlines in the, in the description so if people want to get in touch, they can do it that way. Um, Petrina, do you have any comments you want to make about how people can help the campaign? Um, yeah, as JC said, just um, look out on all your social media sites. Most of these um, campaign groups um, will list events. There's a activist calendar you can find. Um, uh, but, yeah, currently um, I'm involved in, I guess, two major campaigns. So there's Scarborough Gas, um, Stop Scarborough Gas, is one. Um, so no to Scarborough Gas, sorry, SNTC. There's so many. Um, so yeah, look up that one, get on board. Um, as I said, I do a kind of weekly stall in town, educating people and handing out um, information. Um, uh, yeah, what was the other one I was going to pull out? Oh, anti-fracking campaign. Okay, again, this is a, um, a separate campaign, but linked because um, if Plan fracking goes ahead in the north of Australia, then they're going to be building a pipeline down to Scarborough Gas, and we're looking at our entire northern peninsula will just be, you know, an industrial wasteland if that goes ahead as well. So there's also a uh, Kimberley mob up there uh, are yeah. fighting that. Um, uh, yeah, who else have I forgot to mention? But yeah, as JC said, just um, get on, do a bit of research, just just look up Scarborough Gas, and then all the all the um, groups fighting it will uh, mm. yeah pop up as i said greenpeace have got on board as well they're doing uh, a massive campaign yeah um, the conservation council wa you know they they do a campaign as well we've got 350 there's market forces you know so many um helping and, and sticking together so and along with save our song lines which you know which is you know run and solely run by us guys and, and we um you know we have a good team of, uh, as well with us that, that help us through a lot of things as well. Um, but it's also giving that voice to, you know, the cultural matters at hand as well, which is really important when we're talking about conservation and culture and bringing that together. Yeah, and if anyone has, a, like, time and opportunity to actually go to these places where the desecration is happening, mm. um, it makes a hell of a lot of difference to, like, to be there and see it and then... That's um, right. Yeah. You know what, I eh? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm still yeah. doing Jake he was going to take me out on country twice now, but pretty much got ran out of town <laughs> after yeah. the court came. But, um, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. when we first yeah. got there, um, Josie's family welcomed some country and was it your mm -hmm. son, nephew, did a did a call out, yeah. um, which was 
yeah, it was it was really powerful to to know that um you know we had the acceptance and of, of the mm. elders and custodians and yeah. just to be told these people are here for the right reasons. They're not your normal <laughs> white colonising bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. yeah, and also the Australian Conservation Foundation as well. They they're taking Woodside to court um, over you know over the Great Barrier Reef and the emissions that's going to going to go from one one end of the country to the other. So you know just imagine. It's that's from one end of no, that's over where you are. So, Alex, and so like we're thinking, you know, this this is huge. Like this, is, it's it's a huge project, and then you know, this is emissions are going to go that far, and they're going to they're going to kill, you know, the Great Barrier Reef, and what are they, you know they're going to what are they going to do to our our Yura, our country, which is right there, and and our waters as well. That's another thing um, that uh, we haven't sort of we touched on. Um, you know, when they're running these pipelines through, um, uh, it was only maybe four or five years ago they found a whole heap of uh, archaeology, archaeological, um, you know, lots of cultural stuff underwater there. So, <coughs> sorry, are they just gonna? They're just gonna keep that? You know, don't worry about that fine. You know, um, even though it was like all, all in the, you know, it was all up there and. You know, it was it was the greatest thing on earth, and now that it doesn't even matter. They're just going to put a pipeline through it. You know, this is these are cultural sites underwater. Just because you can't see it, you think that you know nobody remembers that they're there. Well, you know, that's um, it, it did come out, and it was it was it is a thing that there are, there are they proved it and they found them. So, you know, I remember they had they had um, oh heaps of boats out every day for about three or four months. Um, out there just, you know, scanning the bottom of the sea, looking at these, you know, a treasure trove of um, ancient artefacts and, you know, showing them more story of what's under the water that's, that, you know, is also connected to above the water. Um, so, you know, that's another thing about, you know, getting, you know, getting all of these facts together and, and going, right, this is not good enough, you know, getting with the cause, going behind it, and really voicing your opinion because now it's the time that everybody needs to voice their opinion about these things. Thank you both very much for your time. Um, before we go, do you have any final comments, Josie or Petrina? I just want to say just the insanity of our government's disregard from, you know, we live with the world, like the planet's oldest living cultural history in the world. Now, you imagine if they found a gas seam or something under Stonehenge um, and for some reason the Australian government has absolutely no respect, never has. I mean, I know that's colonisation and everything, but, um, you know, it's something we should be preserving and learning from and, and living with and um, just just the hypocrisy of, like, you know, Tanya Pilbersick and, and Labor getting, getting up there and saying, oh, Dukong Gorge was that absolutely terrible, you know, we'll never let that happen again, which was, you know, for those of you who don't know, it was Rio Tinto, um, just to get a little bit more out of their mind, blew up what was essentially um, a site with the first evidence, I think, of um, human camping, like they found kangaroo bones and evidence of, um, you know, a campsite, and Rio Tinto just blew it up. <laughs> and Tanya Pilbisic saying, you know, so terrible, will never happen again. And the, literally the same thing is happening to Marujuka Rock Art, just slowly more torturously, but just no disregard to the to the history, let alone, you know, the cultural heritage and what it means to um, Josie's people, but just in terms of archaeological history. Um, yeah, I, I, it just blows, <laughs> blows me away every time. I don't know why. I should, I, you know kind of expected but it, it's still just outrageous just uh, yeah I mean even even like this urea plant right so Jason um filming in there there was there's another area isn't there that isn't as close obviously to the plant but it's already been cleared and they could put their urea plant there and Perman literally just came out and said oh it's not economically viable you know because it's a couple of extra hundred k's down the road well so, it's not only 20 and it's like, yeah. you know, they just don't want to spend the money to, you know, out of their project because yeah. they're crazy. And, um, yeah, you know, so they won't spend the money. There, so. Yeah. And, it, and another thing is, like, they, but, um, yeah, even their investors, you know, you've got their investors, which are Society Royale, 
which are, you know, a French bank. Um, you know, and France have their own rock art there. They don't let anybody breathe on it. You know, they've made a replica and to let people, so many people through to see it every now and again. But you can't even, you have to wait years and years before you even to go in to even look at the real thing. And, you know, if you were, if you're one of the 20 that get through every year to go and actually look at it for probably just to, to you know, um, go and do a study on it or something, um, but you can't even breathe on it. And they're, you know, they're putting money into a company that's over here just desecrating ours. Like, how do they, who do they think they are? I'm like, this is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and, and an Indian company coming to desecrate our country. You know, go and put it on the Taj Mahal. Go and see what your mom's yeah. like. You know, yeah. like Herman, piss yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. Same up Sorry, with Kimberley, isn't it? It's a, it's a texting yeah. company. Yeah, exactly. You know, <sighs> don't, it's yeah. They just there's no thought whatsoever. Don't put it in the old backyard. You know, yeah. see how you like it in a you know in in ten years time. You know, your yeah. your, your whole family will be suffering from bronchitis, asthma, and godness knows what else. You know, your grandkids will be deformed. And hey, what? So you, what are you trying to do to, you know, human beings? You know, the, it's just, it's, it's sacrilege. It's terrible. Exactly. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Well, thanks, everybody. That's going to that's gonna bring our show to an end today. I want to give a big heartfelt thanks to both Josie and Petrina for sharing their time with us today. And thank you for checking us out here on Greenleft. Um, if you do like the work that we do, please remember you can become a Greenleft supporter. It is a terribly important way for, uh, to, for us to support our work. You can also support us on Patreon, but also remember without spending a single cent, you can give this video or podcast a thumbs up. Please share it in your networks, help us build the audience, and that'll make a big difference as well. Until next time, we'll see you soon.